All right, so here we are picking up optimization part two, finishing off the second problem from our examples. Uh, let's see how you did, right? That's that's why we're here. So uh, first, let's reiterate where we were. So we had talked about the fact, okay, well, our equation was little d equals the square root of x to the fourth minus x squared plus one. But I pointed out, okay, I'm going to rewrite this as um, uppercase d in order to distinguish that this is a polynomial, but uh, little d is smallest when big D is x to the fourth minus x squared plus one is smallest. So we only need the critical values of capital D. All right, let's do the derivative. So D prime equals four x to the third minus two x, find our critical values, set it equal to zero, factor, pull out a two x, uh, then I get two x squared minus one. So x equals zero and x equals plus or minus one over root two are my critical values. Remember that we talked about also earlier on that x can be all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Um, so these are valid values. Uh, now I did my first derivative test since we have to do, since we are not doing our candidates test this time. So I made my increasing decreasing chart. Here are the values that I plugged in, negative one, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, one, this became negative positive, negative, positive. I'm looking for relative mins, so I can use my derivative speak. So since d prime of x is less than zero on negative infinity, negative one over root two, and d prime of x is greater than zero on negative one over root two to zero at x equals negative one over root two is a relative minimum since d prime of x is less than zero on zero to one over root two, and d prime of x is greater than zero on one over root two comma infinity at x equals one over root two is a relative minimum. Now, what was the question asking us? It wanted the points. So we need to find the y coordinate. Uh, we know the x coordinates are one over root two and negative one over root two. So I'm going to plug those into the y equals x squared plus one equation. And I get y equals three over two. So therefore, I'm going to answer the question, the points negative one over root two comma three over two plus one over root two, I'm sorry, not plus, and one over root two comma three over two on y equals x squared plus one are closest to the point zero two. Whew. Yeah, nailed it. All right, let's look at example three here. Uh, what dimensions for a one liter can, can, I'm sorry, for a one liter cylindrical can will use the least amount of material. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to minimize amount of material. Notice that it is a one liter can. So in this case, the can has to exist. Remember we talked about earlier with the box where we said the volume could be zero because the surface area could still be 108. Um, in this case, the can needs to exist. So we have a one liter can. Uh, I want you to come up with the equations for this. So pause the video. Try to start it out. If you want to go through the whole problem, that's fine. But at least just try to come up with the equations if you're confused on how to start, and then we'll talk about that. So pause the video, come up with your equations, any bounds that you have, and unpause when you're ready to check. Okay, so this is what I have, that we are trying to minimize surface area because that is going to be the amount of material. We also know volume is uh, 1,000 centimeters cubed or one liter. So I said volume is pi r squared h. If you are uh, not sure on any of these equations, just look them up. You do not have to memorize them. The more you know, the better, but you don't have to memorize them. So volume is pi r squared h. I know 1,000 is pi r squared h. I isolated the h, so I did 1,000 over pi r squared. Now also in doing this, I was thinking about the bounds. So remember we talked about bounds. So if H, I'm sorry, if R is zero, H gets infinitely large, or if R gets infinitely close to zero, I should say. If R gets infinitely large, H gets infinitely close to zero. So both R and H have an open interval from zero to infinity, not including zero and not including infinity. Uh, because if they are zero, then we actually don't have the one liter can. Uh, and we so we need to have that. So this tells us now that we do have uh, open intervals. Um, so there's no fixed endpoints. However, we are still restricted that R and H need to be positive values. So now I take my surface area equation uh, and surface area for a can is gonna be two pi R squared. So that's the top and the bottom of the can 
plus 2 pi r h, so this is the size of the can. Now here I'm going to take h, and I'm going to take my h here, and I'm going to substitute in 1000 over pi r squared, and then I just did a little bit of simplification, and so that's how I ended up with 2000 over r, and then I still have the 2 pi r squared. Now that we have our equation, we are trying to minimize because we want the least amount of material. So go ahead and uh, finish the problem from here if you haven't already. Uh, pause the video, find your critical values, do your tests, answer the question. Unpause when you're ready to check. Okay, so I got r is going to equal the cube root of 500 over pi, and h, I didn't simplify this, is going to equal 1,000 over pi times the cube root of 500 over pi squared centimeters. Those are going to be the dimensions that will use the least amount of material. Let's look at how I got that if we are confused. So back up here, with we stopped with our equation. I took the derivative. Uh, then because this had an r squared in the denominator and this did not, I got a common denominator. So I multiplied the top and the bottom of this by r squared. So that's how I got 4 pi r cubed minus 2,000 over r squared. Set the numerator equal to 0. Set the denominator equal to 0. Find my critical values. r equals the cube root of 500 over pi. r equals 0. However, remember, because of my bounds on r, that r had to be greater than 0, I know that I can ignore this 0. Uh, then I did an increasing decreasing chart for my first derivative test. I put 0 as my left bound. I put my critical value here. I plugged in 1. I plugged in 10. This was negative. This was positive. So then using my derivative speak, I can justify that that is a minimum. So since s prime of a is less than 0, uh, I'm sorry, sa prime is less than 0 on 0 to cube root of 500 over pi, and sa prime is greater than 0 on cube root of 500 over pi to infinity at r equals cube root of 500 over pi is a relative minimum. And then again, make sure that we are answering the problem in the context of the problem. And the problem wanted us to say, what is the least what are the dimensions uh, for the least amount of material to create that one liter can so our dimensions are going to be the r value and the h value okay last one so minimizing cost we are going to construct a box whose base length is three times the base width the material used to build the top and the bottom cost ten dollars per foot uh, and then the material used to build the sides costs six dollars per foot. So if the box must have a volume of 50 feet cubed, determine the dimensions that will minimize the cost of the box. So we know that it has to have a volume of 50 feet cubed, therefore we can't have zero uh, as any of our dimensions. Um, we are trying to determine the dimensions that will minimize cost. So we know we can need to come up with a cost equation. We know volume is going to relate to that. We also know this is a relationship between some of the sides of the box. So I want you to go ahead and write the equations. Pause the video. Uh, if you are confident in your equations, go ahead and finish the problem, but at least try and come up with the equations first. So pause the video, do that. Unpause when you are ready to discuss. Okay, so cost equation, 60W squared plus 800 over W. What does that mean? I don't know. Well, uh, I do, actually. So we have volume, right? Volume of a box is length times width times height. I know that the length is 3 times the width. So volume is 3 times the width times the width times the height, or 3W squared times the height. I know the volume has to be 50. So the height is 50 over 3w squared. Now, I alluded to this uh, before we paused, but this is going to, again, be open intervals where w, l, and h all have uh, a domain of 0 to infinity, not including 0 and not including infinity. Because as one of them gets infinitely large, the other ones get infinitely close to 0. But again, in order for this relationship to be true, they have to exist. Uh, and in order for this to relationship to be true, they have to exist. So now let's come up with a cost equation. Well, I know that the um, bottom and top cost $10 per square foot. 
So the bottom and the top is going to be length times the width. The bottom and the top is times two, right? Because there's a bottom and a top. And then it's times 10 because it's $10 per these dimensions. Then the sides, two of the sides are going to be the length times the height. So that's why it's length times height times two and then times six because that is $6 per foot squared. And then the other two sides are gonna be the width times the height. So two times the width times the height times again six because the sides are $6 per foot squared. Then I did substitution to get all of these in terms of W. Um, so the length is 3W, the length is 3W, the height is 50 over 3W squared, uh, the height is 50 over 3W squared. Then I simplified this, combined like terms, and that's how we got uh, the cost is 60W squared plus 800 over W. Okay, now I want you to pause again if you haven't already and solve the equation and find your dimensions. Unpause when you are ready to check. All right, so hopefully we got W is the cube root of 20 over three. The length is three times the cube root of 20 over three and the height is 50 over three times the cube root of 20 over three feet. How did we come up with that? Great question. All right, so we left off with our cost equation. Here is my derivative, simple power rule. Uh, this had a denominator of w squared, so I got a common denominator, <clears throat> set the numerator and denominator equal to zero, and I get w is the cube root of 20 over three and w equals zero. Uh, similar to the previous problem, w cannot be zero because of my restrictions on w. So then I did an increasing decreasing chart with a left bound of zero. Uh, put my critical value on there, I plugged in one, I plugged in five, this was negative, this was positive using my derivative speak. Since c prime of w is less than zero on zero to cube root of 20 over three and c prime of w is greater than zero on cube root of 20 over three to infinity at w equals cube root of 20 over three is a relative minimum. Uh, one thing to point out before we do our conclusion here, notice on all of these problems, I am being very uh, careful to make sure that I'm using the correct variables within my derivative speak. Right, so in this case, I had a function that was c of w, so I should be referring to c and w uh, within my derivative speak. Don't just call everything f of x. Um, and then the last part, of course, is answering the question. So I knew w, I know my relationship between length and w is 3w is l, and I know my relationship between height and w is 50 over 3w squared is h. Uh, in this case, we do not really care about simplifying these. That's why I just left them as they are. All right, so conclusion. Identify what you're trying to optimize. Uh, write it in terms of one variable. Identify the domain and um, determine if you need to check endpoints. So are you doing your candidates test or are you doing an increase and decrease in chart or a second derivative test? And as always, have fun. I mean, this is this is like good, really good stuff. This is a lot of fun. Make sure you're having fun. I know you are. Okay.